Hello, welcome to Animal School. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Lindsay and I ran an animal and education centre with 120 rescued animals. Let me take you into the crazy world of my reptiles, birds, amphibians, mollusks, fish, mammals and of course the depths of my own mind. This is Lindsay's Animal School. I am a girl who talks to the animals. I bring them breakfast and I pick up all their food. If you'll please subscribe, I'll take you for a ride in my animal school. Hi! This week's feature creature will be my green wing macaw, Banjo, who went from a nervous rescue animal to the incredible ambassador that he is today. We're going to catch up with the further improvements of animal school and I'll take you deep into my allotment where I'm growing food. I'm going to teach you a song about rabbit and poo and also teach you how to draw a parrot. <coughs> so while we've all been thinking about the Easter Bunny, it's time for me to tell you that rabbits don't eat chocolate. In fact, they eat something a little bit different and a little bit disgusting. Rabbits like to eat grass. And because grass is a very indigestible plant, the stomach of the rabbit can't break it up into all the vitamins and energy it needs simply by digesting it once. So the rabbit has to eat its food twice, which means that it literally has to eat its own poo. In order to explain this better for you at home, I've written a song called I'll Tell You Why Rabbits Eat Their Own Poo. Please feel free to learn it and sing along at home. Tell you why rabbits eat poo I know it's not nice but it's what they do They eat their food twice Cause once it's not enough for all the vitamins they need For energy and speed And running away from the fox that hunts them every day And it's what they have to do to survive They eat their poo but it don't taste nice Their food's so unnutritious, gotta eat it twice So tell your friends But it keeps them fit Tell them why rabbits eat their own droppings Gotta eat what's there, they can't go shopping Tell them why rabbits eat poo I know it sounds gross, but it is the truth All those blades of grass is passing through the rabbits of autumn Let it never be forgotten that they eat their own poo So now we've established that you've learnt that We'll move on to look at our feature creature, Banjo, the green wing macaw so I a lot of people asking me about Banjo because they saw him in last week's drawing episode. Banjo, he's a clever boy, aren't you? Yes, you are. And he can talk, he can say quite a few words um, because, well, he's a parrot. And what amazing parrot he is. Banjo came to me about five years ago as a rescue bird. He was nervous and he had never really come out of the cage. He had barely any feathers and I had my work cut out training him to be the confident bird he is today. He'd been stuck in the same cage for about 10 years and he'd started to pull out his own feathers. This is known as feather plucking. And I wonder if any of you people at home have birds that feather pluck because it is quite a common condition. It happens when these birds get bored. So I do my best to keep Banjo entertained. I read to him, sing to him, draw to him, and he even has his own parrot TV. And we do training. This is clicker training. Good boy. Oh, good boy. So Banjo told me off last week for focusing on chickens when, of course, he feels he should be the centre of attention. He feels he should be the centre of attention now, tomorrow, the day after. And this is because parrots, like Banjo, have the same intelligence as a four-year-old child. Only unlike a four-year-old child, they never grow up. And this is why they should not be just kept in a cage. I'm here this morning with Banjo, the green wing macaw. He's a parrot. It's Easter Sunday. Wishing you a very happy Easter. You want to say hello to everyone at home? Well, I can hear... <laughs> Hello. They're all watching you from their houses. Yeah? You're going to say hello? Where 
Where do macaws come from? Well, macaws come from South America. I've been to South America. Yeah, I have. I went all that way. And I used the skills I'd learned from Banjo to help rescue macaws in Ecuador. But more about him and that another week. It's time to tell you about more improvements that are going on at Animal School. I have been looking for bits of wood to fence my tortoise garden. And while spring springs into action at HQ, some building work has been going on. Namely, meshing the new chipmunk enclosure. The chipmunks are going to have an outdoor space where people can walk in and hand feed them. And I cannot wait until this happens. It's going well. More meshing? More meshing, getting the staples in this side. We've tacked in with little staples, but it needs the big ones. And the captain keeps working away. Bless him. A bit rickety up the ladder here in this wind. Good grief. I just hope he doesn't fall off. Arnold couldn't cope without him. He absolutely adores him and will follow him anywhere, even when he looks ridiculous. So this week in the allotment, I made a raised bed out of old pieces of wood that were lying around the house. And I also filled it with manure that was just sitting on our muck heap and there was compost underneath the manure. Been there for years, I never realised. And this has helped grow my plants. This is possibly the best thing I've ever grown. Look at the size of it. That, my friends, is a radish. Cucumbers. So I saw this online as well. Um, if you get a garlic from the kitchen and you put it in a jar of water, the, it starts to grow. Because it's so cold today, but not in the greenhouse, luckily. I've been planting a lot of um, leftover fruit and veg that I would normally just chuck in the bin. These peas are straight out of my pigeon seed. So my pigeons um, have a mix of different types of seed every morning and I was looking through it and I suddenly realised peas and peas are my favourites. Having planted them, it's on with the watering. Lots of watering. All done. So it's time to plant some seeds in my raised bed. So here it goes, my first ever attempt at planting carrots. Um, these are some drills that I've made um, for the carrots to grow in and the carrot seeds are here. So, here they are. And off I go, spacing them about an inch apart. Please share what plants you've been able to grow at home from seed. It might be nice to encourage each other during this lockdown. And, and I'll to... keep experimenting. This is a pink lady apple and um, it came straight, oh here we go, straight from the core. So, what the hell, I'm just going to plant the whole, the whole core in like that. And some more information about Kamos, our forest cat. Whilst he spends a lot of the days prowling, he spends an enormous time asleep and he folds himself into the most interesting of positions. I asked on Facebook if other people's cats looked similarly strange and I got sent all these wonderful pictures and I thought maybe it was a long-haired cat thing, but apparently not. And Eloise drew this cat on a burger. I was once again really impressed with all the pictures that you sent in of cockerels. Thank you for drawing them and I would like to show them now. Great stuff, particularly this cockerel drawn by Jolene with its wings out. It's stunning. It looks so much like spikelet, it's almost a photograph. And I think this is probably one of my favourites. Sophia, I miss you too and I love it. And this was sent in by Barry Taplin. Daisy and Charlotte are his pet chickens and named after his mother and mother-in-law. Okay, so we learnt to draw a cockerel last week and Banjo didn't like that. He wants to be the star. So he's insisting that I show you how to draw a parrot. In fact, he's really on my back about it. So, um, I just want to everyone can draw this shape here. This comma shape is going to form up Banjo's beak. It's important that we can draw this shape, okay? So we draw like a comma like this, and then we're going to go to the middle of our comma and come down and join that in. We've drawn his beak. This is a hook beak, which is something that all of our parrots have. Yeah, see? A hook beak. It helps him to crack into nuts and things. So we do a circular shape that comes up here, which is going to be the top of Banjo's head. And then we're going to stop once we get to about the bottom of the beak. We're going to go from the top of our comma and we're going to do another circle on the inside that goes down and joins about to the middle of the second part of the beak that we drew. Second. 
We're going to give him his eyes a circle in the middle, which is a round circle with another circle in the middle. We're going to... You right there? Yeah? Oh! Oh! Okay, so that, that's a little less painful. So we're going to have the head here and we're going to go down into a curve into the whip. So this means... Oh no! Oh no, don't do that! What are you going to... Are you just going to put it back? Yay! Do it again! Can you put it Oh, put that back. Okay. Oh, he's going to do this here. Oh! Oh no! Banjo! What are you doing that for? What are you doing that for? Are you going to put it back? Can you put it back? Can you put it back in? Oh, good boy! Well done. He's a star. Okay, so um, if I go from this line here, we're going to go down, all the way down, which is going to be to where the base of our wing is. So if you can remember last week, we kind of did a um, curly kind of shape. If I can show you, you're going to go one, two, three, four, five. That's the edge of the secondary feathers. The primary feathers, we're going to come down by joining into this wing. Here, we're going to do some more lines to make those primary feathers look like our parrot has tucked his wings in. This wing needs to go up a little bit. So with his head, we're going to come down in a kind of slope and down shape. This is going to be where his bottom... I'm just going to take this back. He's... Banjo's telling me off that I made him look too fat. So... We're just going to take this line in a bit more. So what we need to do now is do his little leg tops, which are a bit fluffy. We we'll do that. Tuck his bottom in here, and we're going to come down for his feet. Now, parrots have what is known as zydactyl feet, which means that um, whereas our chicken had three feet going forward and one going back, the parrot has two forward and two going back, which enables him to grip the way he does. So we're just going to go one, two three, four, which is more likely um, how we're going to do it. Banjo does have sharp claws. We're just going to add those in here. And uh, we're going to have his hand up here. I'm actually going to bring this one up and we're going to curl it round a bit like on my logo. Can you see the parrot here on my logo is holding something? I'm going to come up, curl him round. I'm going to go round. Got his lovely claws. Bit too sharp for me. Okay, and last but not least, we're going to give him, we're going to come off from the, the wing tip here, we're going to give him a lovely long tail, like only a green wing macaw has, coming up. Beautiful. He also needs a little bit here. Banjo beak has some black on its uh, tip, so we're going to give him a bit of black here. We're going to do another, we're going to fill this in black as well. And because he is a green wing macaw, he has the sustaining that goes around here. In fact, no, uh, no macaw's feather pattern around here is the same. Each one has a pattern unique to it, which is quite fun. Um, so have fun with that. Send us in your pictures of banjo that you're going to draw. You're really looking forward to seeing them, aren't you? Yeah, he is. From Banjo and I, thank you. If you're interested in nature, you will never be bored. Banjo, 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 banjo. You're so clever, clever, you're so clever, clever. Banjo, banjo, banjo. Banjo, 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 you're so clever. Banjo, banjo, banjo. You're ambassador to the other foot. Banjo, good boy, banjo.